S S S S K Vibe Maker. S K Vibe Maker. My interviews are hotter. You know we bring through the best special guests. We are not going to change tradition anytime soon. Today I'm feeling a little bit underdressed, under swagged, because Bree One Ray is in the building. How you doing today? <laughs> You did not need to do that intro when you look perfectly oh, fine thank with your you. glowing skin. Thank you, thank you, thank and you. And the all black with the grey. <laughs> Says the person who just woke up this morning and said, I'm going to spray a star in my head. It's look true. at that. I was just feeling a little bit extra today, guys. <laughs> That's when you know that you're definitely a fashionista. Mm. So let's rewind. Let's like, you know, for those that don't know, the last few years of your career, how would you summarize it to anyone who's just getting to know about Brie Runway? I would say the last few years of my career has been a crazy but really blessed and extremely highly favoured ride because I feel with what I do and, you know, it's been said that, you know, dark skinned women are only supposed to do it like this or dark skinned women can't do this or that. And I'm a living testimony that you can do whatever it is that you want to do. It does take longer, but the honest route and the, the truthful route is always a little bit longer. So mm -hmm. I'm, I'm happy to live it. I feel like the associations you as friends with Leomi Anderson from Young Right mm -hmm. College. Um, that's my sister, actually. That's, that's your proper brethren. Yeah. You know what I mean? With those associations and with such the, the swag when mm. people see you and what they know about you, people in the early days thought that you were a model that could rap. Did you hear any of those? Really? Like, sort of, yeah, a lot of people thought that. I mean, I've, I've, the first thing some people ask me, I think because of how I dress, like people be like, oh, you're a model. And I'm like, oh, I'm kind of short, but oh, okay. <laughs> but I'm like, kind of. <laughs> but yeah, no. I've never, heard, yeah, I've kind of heard it, yeah. Kind of, kind of, kind of. Well, you've had some big cosigns. You've just come off the tour, European tour with Lizzo. Yes. You've collaborated with Missy Elliott, mm -hmm. Lady Gaga. Mm -hmm. Obviously, Khaled's on the latest mm -hmm. single. I mean, Stormzy. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm trying to remember if I've missed out any as well. Like, you've had some big cosigns yeah. for someone who hasn't released an album yet. I know. Now, how did you, you know, as a newer artist in the game, mm -hmm. how did you get these certified international cosigns and get into these places with these artists? The crazy thing is, I feel like there's something that God's put on me that is undeniable, like a favor that's undeniable. And these connections that you've seen me get are all organic connections. There's not, it's not like a label has like sought out after it and, you know, like, oh, an A&R or whatever. These are all people that I've become friends with or they like me and then they co-sign me and I didn't even know that they knew I existed and then it goes from there. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it's all organic relations mm -hmm. that I've, I've managed to get these extremely huge collaborations. But I mean, you make it sound so simple because if that was the case, everybody would be able to do it. I don't want you to like I sort of undersell you yourself. Like you've managed to get yourself in places mm -hmm. to collaborate with Missy Elliott, mm -hmm. collaborate with Chloe. Do you know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? Khalid's on your latest single. Mm -hmm. Not everybody collaborates with Lady Gaga. Yeah. Like, there You're must right. be something you've done. Like, how did you put yourself in those rooms even? Honestly, it's God. <laughs> it's actually God. Like, I can't explain and I can't even owe it to myself because sometimes I even sit back and I'm like, why me? I know I'm good. Mm -hmm. I know I'm good at what I do. I know there's definitely so many things about me that set me apart from everyone else. Mm -hmm. And... I just think God just really loves me. <laughs> Love that. Brie Runway is in the building. I am. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm glad to have you here today, man. I'm so happy to be here. The glasses are looking great and everything. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> now, I think it's been well documented that um, you kind of mentioned it already about mm -hmm. having to fight for being a woman with dark skin. Mm -hmm. You was in school. You got bullied a lot. Mm -hmm. When was that moment where you felt like you had your butterfly moment mm. you know what i'm saying you got the song hot 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 mm -hmm. some people might have said you've been hot 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 all the time you didn't mm -hmm. feel hot 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 you know what i'm saying <laughs> but when did you have that butterfly moment when you started to believe in yourself mm. in your own skin i feel like it it i went from from cocoon to butterfly multiple times in my life and i feel like the earliest stages was probably when i started making faceless covers i used to do faceless covers because i was like oh i don't want to be seen because being seen equates being judged like anyone can judge you if they see you so i was like let me just give them my voice i don't want to give them anything else um 
And then I started finding comfort in the small but ever growing fan base I was getting around doing covers. And I was like, okay, let me give them a little bit more of me. I'll show them what I look like. I'll show them what I dress like. And everyone's like, oh my God, you're so cute or pretty or this or that. And I was like, okay, warming up, warming up. Mm -hmm. So it was like cocoon to butterfly, cocoon to butterfly so many times, so many different ways. Mm -hmm. um, so that's what I would say. Sorry, I just burped. <laughs> It's fine, we're all human. <laughs> <laughs> it just came out. I'm so sorry. It was like, it was the orange juice and the Snickers. I haven't ate, guys, mm. but we in here. <laughs> so we're at a point now where you're fully self-belief, would you say? Yeah, I fully believe in myself. And even there's an even higher and bigger and better version of myself I am now transitioning into because I feel like I'm trying to balance my life out much better. Not only, I feel like, I wouldn't say I've peaked in Brie Runwayism. There's still an even bigger and better version of Brie to come. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I'm still fighting for another version of myself now. Mm -hmm. Like an even better, well-rounded, more balanced, mm -hmm. more organized mm -hmm. human being. Anyone who knows you definitely knows you about the swag, man. I don't feel mm -hmm. like there's any a time that we've seen a Brie when she's been kind of just looking bummy or looking de-swagged. Like every swags. time, you know what I'm saying? It's just something I made up on the spot. Like every time we on see swagged. you, you're on point, you know what I'm saying? Thank you. And you're aligned with like certain fashion brands mm -hmm. as well. Like I said, sometimes people thought that you was a model. Mm -hmm. How did you align yourself with like sort of these fashion brands, mm -hmm. getting these opportunities and where did the passion for fashion start? Mm. When I was a kid, I used to make lots of mood boards from like magazines and I'd say like, oh, this is what I want to look like and dress like when I'm older and blah, blah, blah. So I used to do things like that. And then I think I kind of just got to a place when I was like 13. I was like, I'm going to start. I'm going to start this mood that I've set. I may not have everything. Like, for example, I want a Birkin bag. I bought a fake Birkin shape and put like a H&M scarf around it. Like how the rich ladies I see wearing Birkin bags put their Hermes scarves on the Hermes Birkin. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I started like living it as if I'd live it in the future kind mm -hmm. of thing. Then it just evolved. Everyone would say that's no me. She's always been the same, but she's just evolved. Mm -hmm. It just gets bigger and better, but it's the same thing. Mm -hmm. Always. And how did you get these opportunities with the fashion brands? Because you're definitely getting them. I am. I yeah. am. I just think I get on well with people I work with. Obviously, the word spreads. And I just think I'm putting out a good message, a good image on social media. Social media helps me a lot. Obviously, they mm -hmm. your Instagram's like your CV now. Mm -hmm. um, so I even take like my posts very seriously, like how one piece of content looks next to another because mm -hmm. I want you to come on that page and be like ooh there's colour there's life there's success here mm -hmm. there's beauty there's outfits you know what I mean I just want it to feel like a well rounded mood board of my life and yeah social media helps a lot so how, you, you, how you share your stuff really matters I hear that mm -hmm. so when you went to college what did you mm. study then because you definitely I feel like you didn't go to college to, to study medics or English. <laughs> <laughs> I was doing performing arts drama and like English, something like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do you have a stylist? Because, you know, you, you said that you woke up this morning and just decided mm -hmm. to spray the star into your head. <laughs> I feel like, you know, you have to have a lot of fashionista sensibilities to be able to do something like that. I feel like if you did have a stylist, mm -hmm. it's a lot of hard work for them because I could imagine you cha challenging them yeah, a lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Always. So always, do you style always. yourself? Do you I have a stylist? I styled myself all today. Boots are loewe. Denim is Levi's, um, vintage Chanel belt, a GCDS bag hanging off as a bag, mm. uh, top from Jaded, glasses from Acne, uh, Bob from Sheer Hair, uh, Star uh, sprayed from Amazon. I got the stencil from there and sprayed it. <laughs> Lord of mercy. <laughs> I don't know. I just think of stuff. Like, ideas just come in my head and I just try stuff because I have a lot of stuff to play with at mm -hmm. home. So... All I need to do is just wake up a little bit earlier and then I can have a better play. Mm -hmm. If I didn't wake up early, I'd be hitting a track mm -hmm. You know what I mean? We get the gist that Brie is a very creative person. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I hear that you get involved in the production. You're, you're um, producing your videos. I'm involved in everything. 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 Do you know what I'm saying? When it comes to your music, people might say it's quite eclectic as well. Mm -hmm. People question, is it alternative? Mm -hmm. Is it pop? Is it rap? Like, what is it? What would you call your music? I think it's everything. It's a genreless bunch of sounds from my heart. And it's a piece of everything that everyone loves. Mm -hmm. So it's rock. It's pop. It's R&B. It's rap. It's 
spoken word is this is everything is poetry mm-hmm. free runway poetry mm-hmm. runway poetry mm-hmm. yeah because rap is at the core though mm. like you spit bars it's not getting twisted mm-hmm. like you know what i mean you, you spit bars though <laughs> you definitely spit bars you spit bars yeah i mean do you write a lot of your songs as raps yeah 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 and then like i just sing out melodies and then just fill in the words but yes i always write raps like all the time i'm always mm-hmm. like in my phone Straight up. Mm-hmm. I've been speaking to a, a lot of artists recently about mm-hmm. the numbers. We're in a digital world. The numbers are there very much yeah. for people to see, whether it's YouTube, mm. digital streaming platforms mm-hmm. and that. And sometimes managers, record labels mm-hmm. and per se will lead you to believe that the songs doing the big numbers are the best things since sliced yeah. bread. How much of a correlation do you feel like there is between the songs with big numbers and how good a song actually is? I don't think the songs that, have big numbers necessarily equates to a song being good i feel like there's things that are hyped and there's things that are actually good Mm -hmm. (laughs) wow how do we determine what's actually good then i think the musicality the quality of the bars like there's things that are popular and the bars are like what you know what i mean Mm -hmm. so yeah i think there's a certain quality that will let you know that oh yeah, this person is selling art as opposed to selling nonsense that's just happened to click. Do you quite often feel pressure from the numbers side Mm -hmm. of things? Like whether you feel like, oh man, like I've got to do these big numbers. Mm -hmm. Do you you study the numbers, your own numbers Mm -hmm. often? Is that something you look at? To be fair, I... I try not to get involved in the numbers thing so it stays very art focused but I am adopting a bit of the mentality just because I understand how the industry is and I fully come to a place of acceptance that it is what it is it's all about the numbers isn't it Mm. so I will play the game to own it I hear that (laughs) how much currency do you put in going viral Mm -hmm. and challenges because that is definitely a big part of marketing Mm. these days for all popular culture i am someone that's gone viral a lot for literally just existing (laughs) and that i i I think i've only partaken in like a handful of challenges that are viral i try not to play into like the challenges thing because it makes me feel like a bit of a machine as opposed to a human being. If there's a challenge that I like and I want to do it, but I don't like looking at challenge, I'm a, I must do everything to stay relevant. That makes me feel weird. Mm-hmm. That makes me feel really weird. And I'd rather not. My interviews are hotter. Brie Runway is in the building. For some reason, I'm having a little bit of a challenge saying the name today. Brie Runway. There we go. There you go. Yeah, I got it. I got it. Do yeah. people struggle sometimes? I don't sometimes. know. Sometimes. They do. Brie Runway. Brie Runway. <laughs> Brie Runway. <laughs> so let's break it down on record today. Why Why Brie Runway? <laughs> why is name. it hard? <laughs> I don't Brie, know. Brie Runway. Brie yeah. Runway. Break down the story behind your name. Brie Runway. Hey, I'm Brie Runway. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> um, so the song, the, not the song Brie Runway, the name Brie Runway came from um, my cousin, basically he was called and is called runway pedro Mm -hmm. and i basically like wanted to have his clothes and stuff like that Mm -hmm. when he was when i was younger i was like i want to be like you i want louis Vuitton trainers and stuff like that and he sat me down at a family party once and was like i'm gonna give you something i was like yes finally the time is here and it was like yeah you can have the name runway Mm -hmm. i was like what what? I was like, so no glasses, no nothing. He was like, you could have the name Runway. He anointed I was like, you. Fair enough. Went on Facebook, <laughs> put it in, but then it became really long because I wanted to be called so many different things. And then one day I just sliced it, Brie, Runway. Simple. Yeah. History. History. Let's talk about the song Pick Your Poison with mm-hmm. Stormzy. I mean, Stormzy doesn't collaborate with everybody. Mm. Talk to us about working with Stormzy, being in the studio with mm-hmm. him, how it went down. Um, So that collaboration, again, by God's grace, literally fell on my lap. Like, I was hanging out with Stormzy and his friends at uh, Coachella last year. And he said that he has this really beautiful song that he feels that I'd be good on. And I was like, okay, let's do it. 
And then I took, I think it was the MP3 from him. And whilst I was recording in LA, I just recorded um, a, along the MP3 just so he can hear it. And I was like, what do you think? And blah, blah, blah. He was like, oh my God, it sounds sick. And I was like, okay, cool. Let's like try and finish it. Like in my head, I was like, let's like you do a verse and all of that stuff. But we never got round to it looking like that in the end. So he just stayed on the hook, which is nice because... Obviously, my voice sounds really nice on it, as he predicted. And the studio session was really cool. We was debating over, like, I think it was two verses and stuff like that. We rewrote it. And it was a really nice session. It was so cute. It was so, so, so cute. A hot topic that I've been speaking to a lot of artists recently, um, female artists in particular, mm -hmm. is the pressures to be a bad bee. Mm. The pressures to have surgery mm. and all those kind of things. It can come from multiple directions mm -hmm. in the music industry and yeah. life. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Have you felt m many of those pressures? Like to be a bad B mm. or to have body surgery? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know what? That's such a good question. I don't feel the pressure to actually have surgery. But I, I have thought, you know, like just the typical stuff like... Oh, um, oh! if I had bigger boobs, like in this dress, it would have looked nicer or this or that. But everyone's always like, you say that, but you're not actually going to go under the knife. Like, just be quiet. <laughs> like, I never will. Maybe if I have a baby, baby or something, because I understand there is power in your body looking nice or whatever. Like, I get it. I get it. I, I, I do feel like it has advanced, like, some people's careers. Like, I can't say it has advanced everyone's careers. But, um, yeah, I do... I do think I do think of that sometimes, but with me, I just need to go to the gym. I have a very good base, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and to go to the gym, I have mm -hmm. great boobs for fashion. Sample sizes will always fit me. It's a little bit of a stretch on the bum and the thighs bit sometimes, but at least the boobies get in. Mm -hmm. What's unfair <laughs> about it though is that these same pressures aren't put on your male counterparts. Yeah. They can mm. show up looking like absolutely anything as long as they slap a diamond chain on it. <laughs> Crazy. Yeah. We heard you've been in the studio with TDE's finest, Dochi. Oh, yes. Yeah, man. What, what's happening with that? What have you been cooking? Is oh there my music gosh. on the it way? Was, there's definitely going to be music on the way. And it was just a big, mad blur of so many sounds. Mm -hmm. Like it was crazy. As I expected, basically. As I expected. But we've got to tap, tap back in and wrap up and... You know what I mean? Because we can both do so much. Mm -hmm. So there was so much going on in the session. It looks like a collaboration that makes sense. Like, yeah. It makes a lot of sense. Definitely, definitely. And I think it's definitely something that people want. So we're going to definitely make it happen. Mm -hmm. For sure. What does success for Brie One Ray look like? For Brie One Ray. Brie One Ray. Brie one Ray. One one way. Way. Why does no one know how to say <laughs> Well, people do know what how to say What does success for Brie Runway yes. look like? Successful Brie Runway looks like a well-balanced life that has a successful music career. Um, I'm rich in health. Um, I have a good relationship with God maintained. I haven't lost myself along the way. I get to share everything with my family. And that looks like success. Mm -hmm. Yeah. This song with Khalid, some mm -hmm. people might say this is a, a new chapter, yeah. a new song, a new musical direction mm -hmm. for you. It's a love song. Yeah. It's melodic. It's You're sweet. not rapping in it. Is this the, a hint of a new musical direction for, for yourself? I just think it's just a hint of oh, another thing Brie Runway can do. Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> you know, stunt on them. Yeah. Another thing I could do. Mm -hmm. Yeah. How did the collaboration with you and Khalid come about? Oh, that was the most organic thing. I met him at a party. I didn't even know he knew I existed. As you do, as you do. Yep. I didn't even know he I, he knew I existed. And he came up to me. He was super shy and it made me super shy. And he was like, I just think you're so dope. I think you're amazing. Everything you do, like really gave me my flowers, like in an abundance in that conversation. Mm -hmm. We exchanged numbers. I felt really shy to text him. I was like, oh my God, <laughs> just because he do not want to text him. But I text, he texts me straight back as he always does. He's kept the same energy mm -hmm. since the beginning. And um, he said I should come and see him and listen to some music and stuff like that. I was like, oh my God, great, I'd love to. So I went to go see him and then it turned into a session and we finished that song in one day. Say nothing, yeah. effortless. W literally, mm -hmm. literally. Love it that. came together so nicely. So what are we saying about an album? Is that like on the horizon? Have you nearly finished the album, started working on an Do album? Do you know what? I've got tracks, lots of songs, 
need to be finished, need to be revisited. But I think an album needs to come at the right time. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if it's the right time for one just yet. I hear you. Yeah. The future is looking very bright. Mm. Before we wrap this, man, are we getting any Afrobeats vibes from you? Are you oh, going to be jumping yes. on it? Any I'm a piano? Maybe not I'm a piano, but Africa is definitely upon the rise. Mm. You got some in the stash, yeah? She's coming. Hey, <laughs> listen, the future's looking very bright. It's yeah. been another one myself, SK Vibe Makeup. My interview to Hotter, Brie Runway. Yeah! <laughs> S -S 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 SK Vibe Maker. <laughs>